Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. And in this video I am going to be painting a Super Mutant from the Fallout Wasteland Warfare game. This is a really cool miniature, it's really horrible, horrific miniature and it's an awesome, awesome uh, little video tutorial of how to paint loads of cool um, epic sort of like skin colours and skin tones and things like that. Because the majority of the miniature is all skin, uh, we're going to focus so much on doing the skin and we're going to get this skin to look and pop so well that it's going to make him look horrific and beautiful all at the same time. So we start out with a beige red. So this is going to be our base colour. And uh, like I say, the majority of the model is uh, skin. So we're going to focus focus quite a lot and quite heavily on getting the skin tone into um, to, to really look good so um, I'm actually building I think it's about four or five different layers onto this so we're using the beige red as the base color and you can apply this sort of skin tone to any model that you like and it doesn't have to be done just on a model that is covered in this much skin you could use this just on the faces and hands and things like that of other models um, so if you want to know sort of like uh, one of the ways that I paint skin and, and how I get the skin to really sort of like stand out, uh, this is the perfect model for me to show you. Um, because of the amount of skin and the size of those like muscle tones and things like that, it'll allow me to show you how I create that effect. So once we've done the base colour of the, uh, uh, the, the skin, I'm just going to move on and paint a little bit in the mouth here. So I'm painting these with just a, a nice sort of like uh, dark red colour. So this is just, it's just called red. Uh, from Vallejo and I paint this inside just around the gums and also just inside of the mouth and around the inside of the mouth area um, and what I'm going to do with this model is I'm going to paint the base at the same time as I paint the model and I'm also going to paint uh, everything using uh, one wash as well so just one shade to tone it down just to kind of make things a little bit easier to follow so that we're not mixing things up and, and worrying about where things are going I'll show you all of that as it as it comes along so it's nice and simple don't uh, it's nice and simple to follow, it. it's going to be a nice, quick, easy uh, paint job. So just using a bit of squid pink just in on the tongue, and the reason for that is, I mean you could paint that red as well if you want, uh, but the reason why I'm using pink is just to separate that from the red in the mouth as well, just to give it a little bit more contrast. And the same we're doing the teeth then, I'm using bone white, which is one of my favourite colours as well. This is like a creamy white colour, I use this a lot for nails, um, teeth, things like that. So once you're doing the teeth, also don't forget to do the claws on the feet as well in the same colour. Because when you use the wash on all of this, it's going to tie all those colours together nicely. And then we can boost them back up a little bit later. So yeah, we're going to focus quite a lot on doing um, a lot of layers for this skin. And the reason being is because each layer that we highlight, we're going to get this, this skin to really pop and this skin to really stand out. And it's going to look incredible. It's going to look really, really different. And it's going to look, um, like I say, quite horrific as well. So yeah. So at the same time, I'm just going to paint the base at the, the, the same time. So I'm just using a beastie brown just to make all of this mud and dirt and things like that. But we're going to like up that and change that and add a little bit of like um, brighter colours and um, some sort of like uh, uh, radioactive sort of um, goo and things like that on there a little bit later. So just covering the whole base apart from the rocks with a beastie brown, making this nice and simple. The rocks then I'm just putting a nice flat medium sort of grey colour on, so just a stone wall grey. And this is uh, again just to separate a few little bits so that those colours and those tones just like stand out from each other. Um, because if we paint everything the same sort of colour and the same sort of tone um, and then wash it in the same sort of way, things aren't gonna stand out. So we want one or two little things just to pop, just to stand off the uh, just to stand off the, the uh, just to stand off each other so that you've got that real nice contrast like I say with the bright pink of the tongue standing out from the red of the mouth and things like that. So moving on to the wash and I'm using the game wash. Um, this is a sepia colour so uh, this does change sort of like slightly change sort of the colour of the, the skin tone underneath so that beige colour that we've got that beige red uh, will turn a little bit more sort of like brown by the time that you're finished with this but this one does if you stir it correctly have a really nice finish to it so once this dries this does dry, dry down to like a really sort of like mat, nice matted effect and this makes it perfect for building tones and building colors back up on top so I'm going to cover the whole miniature and also the base at the same time like I said we're just going to use the single uh, wash for the whole thing um, just to tie it all together and make sure that it all matches and it's all got a similar sort of tone throughout the miniature. 
and then as we build those colors back up and we build those flesh highlights back up we're going to end up with uh, skin that really does stand out so from there once that's dried as you can see it's dried and it's changed the color slightly so it's looking a little bit more sort of like brown and, and, and sort of like a more sepia tone so what I'm going to do now is, and this is quite time consuming, but because the majority, as I say, normally say, because the majority of the miniature is actually skin, we're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of effort on focusing and building that skin back up. Because when we look at this model, um, those are the areas, and that is the area that is going to cover or, or bring your eye to the model mostly. So although it's going to be cool to see some of the other bits like the base and things like that, it's the skin that you really want to get right. So what we're doing is we're going back to that original skin color, um, so just going back to that beige red and using thin down paint as you can see I'm just building up lines and building up and following those muscle um, like sort of the, the, the bits that are sticking out on the model so I'm just following all of the muscle tones and all of the bits like that I'm leaving the wash and that sepia tone just sitting in the gaps as you can see so I'm just building this color up and building up on top now the beauty is with thin down paint you can do this a couple of times so you could do this twice if you wanted to to get the most out of the paint but also the cool thing is it is going to show or it's going to tie itself when it dries into the colors below as well so what I'm doing as you can see I'm just building all of those little bumps up and, and painting all of those little parts of the uh, the muscle and the skin and things back up but I'm just trying to keep my brush going in the same direction as well so I'm not mixing different directions and the reason for that is as we build these tones up you'll see I'm starting to build um, I'll start to leave little gaps in my brush strokes and that'll be done on purpose just so that it creates that depth and that definition in the muscle tone as well so we don't want all of these colors to be flat we want these colors to have a um, so little bits and little um, tones and lines and things like that so that it creates that definition of um, like I say the tone going through the muscle you see where I'm leaving lines on this as I'm painting it's just building that element of, of texture so although the texture isn't always on that miniature uh, by leaving some of those lines we build in our own texture to do it so this is the first highlight that I'm using and this is a combination of the beige red and a basic skin tone and I'm using these at about 50 50 so about half each and what I'm doing is I'm just going back over what I painted with the beige red but like I said this time I'm leaving a few lines and I'm leaving a few bits here and there and like I said the reason for that is we build in that texture so we build in that muscle definition as we go and then of course the more layers that we put this in and the more times we do this the more depth and definition and texture we gain in out of those muscles as well so the more character we build in out of something that could be or could sometimes be seen as quite flat so as you see I'm just trying to, to paint this across um, in, in a way of leaving some of those lines um, in between so that it creates little folds and little textures across the arm um, and the same with all of the muscle texture I'm pretty much doing the same thing across the whole miniature um, and again with this being thinned down paint it's going to dry particularly nice on top so it's going to blend in quite nicely and it's going to look quite natural so that transition although it looks much brighter at the moment isn't going to be as bright as it dries down and again as you can see where I'm just trying to leave some of those lines again just across the top so I'm not worried about those brush strokes because the brush strokes are going to allow that muscle tone and definition to look all the more incredible as we go and as I said we're going to build these tones up about three or four different times um, on purpose so that we gain that, that um, ability to get this skin to really 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 pop and stand out so just show you again as you can see I'm just using the brush the same direction all the way down the uh, the leg muscle here and then build back up the other side and that creates these little um, not so much scratches but these sort of like little brush strokes that is going to add to that definition of that muscle tone so see we go the, the opposite direction so we're pulling ourselves in it doesn't matter if we leave in brush strokes because that's building that tone it's building that character and that's what we want uh, with something like this and you know you could do a similar sort of thing on, on something like a barbarian or a really muscular sort of um, warrior if you're, you're painting sort of like fantasy things in that way where they've got so much muscle and so much tone and definition if you're leaving those lines then uh, you can build up extra definition through it and so again just showing across the leg and across the foot here 
So once we've done the first highlight, then we're going to go back and we're going to do the next highlight. And the next highlight I'm using is just the basic skin tone on its own. So we did the, uh, the beige red as the base, then we used the wash on top, then we came back with the beige red. Then we did the half beige red and the half basic skin tone. And now we're on to just the basic skin tone. So this is going to highlight again. But because we're using the same colours, it's naturally going to blend into each other as well. So you can see on the model where those brush strokes now have, have dried down. And they look quite natural as well. So you can see where those um, brush strokes are sort of uh, sitting on those muscles and on that muscle tone. And what I'm doing is I'm just going back across and I'm just painting again on top. But I'm leaving more of those lines now. So I'm not being quite as um, precise. So again, I'm painting some of the highlights. But I'm again leaving some of those lines and leaving some bits of tone and things like that in between. Um, and the reason for that is we're just going to gradually highlight. And this is going to look more and more natural without it... Um, uh, without covering over the whole of the miniature, without covering over everything that we've done, you see. So by leaving those brush strokes, it creates that definition. And I know I keep saying that, I keep saying that. It's because it's important when you're painting these muscle tones like this, it does add to that character. So as I say, just following the lines, I'm mostly just trying to pick out where the highlights would be. So you don't need to paint the whole miniature and you don't need to cover the whole areas of those muscles and all those parts. It's more a case of just picking out the bits that you think are going to stand out the most. And there you go, you see, see how I'm leaving those lines just across here. There we go. And I'm just using the very tip of the brush and the, the beauty is when you've got nice thin down paints you can get your paints and you can manipulate your paints and move them around the miniature a lot more whereas if your paints were dry you wouldn't be able to manipulate or move them in, in quite the same way. So making sure that your paints are nice and thin down is very very important and you can see why because the paints last longer on your brush as well so when you're painting a big project like this where you need that paint to go along quite a lot of the skin uh, having a thin down paint is is important because it allows you to keep on painting without having to go back and forth to the palette all of the time so we're on to I think probably uh, one of the final highlights here so we've done uh, the, the the basic skin tone and what we're going to do now is with our basic skin tone I'm putting in a small element of light flesh and this light flesh and basic skin tone I'm using a half and half mixture again so similar as to what I did with the previous highlight um, I'm just using half and half so that this creates a nice highlighted uh, much much lighter tone on top and this time I'm only picking out smaller areas but again doing the same thing trying to leave some of those brush strokes again just so that it helps to create that definition of muscle so it helps to create that character and as I say because the majority of this model is skin want to get this skin looking perfect because this is the area that people are going to look at this is the bit that your your friends and things are going to notice the most is the skin and where you're painting so just trying to catch the very uh the the, the very sort of like most um uh, highlighted area so just some of the highest areas some of the highest to reach points so we're not painting the whole thing there you go so just across the back leg there again you see i'm just painting a little bit this time so i'm not covering the whole thing so there we go that's as far as i've gone with the skin we don't really need to do too much more with the skin um, you could push again for a further highlight if you wanted to personally i felt that four was enough so four different colors and painting in that way was enough like i say it is quite um intensive it does take a lot of concentration um, especially to paint that many layers and that amount of skin on all of those bits of muscle um, but it is so worth it in the end because by the time the model is finished it does look incredible so we're just going to move on now and rebuild those colors and I'm just rebuilding the red first so I'm building the same color so the red that we used previously and I'm just painting this across in the mouth area and across the, the gums and things like that and the gums will uh, they, they protrude quite a bit they do stick out quite a bit which is great because that then allows them to um, that allows us to highlight like them quite nicely as well uh, with very minimal effort so I'm going with one of my favorite highlights on the red and I'm just using a bloody red now bloody red is a really nice vibrant red this sticks out quite a lot and like I said previously I'm just going to use that to catch the very um, extreme sort of edges of the gums so I'm just picking out those gums and getting those to highlight and pop in a, a, a nice sort of um, bright vibrant way and I'm also painting a little bit inside of the mouth as well and just trying to catch some of the bits that I think will um, 
we, we'll catch a little bit of the light. There you go. See, just across the gums here, as you can see. And also just a little bit in the mouth, just like so. And the bloody red is a great highlight to that base red as well. It does stand out quite nicely. Uh, and you don't need to do too much more than that for the gums. I mean, you can if you want, but there's no need to go too extreme. And from there, we highlight and back up on that tongue. So I'm just going to go back with that squid pink. Um, the idea with this is to try to catch the, 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 the tongue and paint the tongue back up, but without um, overdoing with the shaders as sat in the recess points. So painting the pink from the inside because the tongue is flopping out over to the side of his mouth. And I'm just trying to leave the area where the, um, the shade is sat in, in the tongue so that it creates those grooves and creates a little bit more depth. Kind of similar to what we did with the skin tones. So it allows that depth and that shade to bring out a little bit more character. And for the highlight with that, I'm actually mixing a little bit of bone white into the squid pink. So this creates a highlight to that pink. And what I'm doing is using the very, very tip of the brush. I'm kind of using like a crosshatch style. So I'm crossing um, the very, very thin layers of paint um, left and right. So across the miniature, across that tongue, just to kind of create um, a texture um, and something a little bit different to look at so that the tongue doesn't look as if it's just made out of one flat color. And we're going to do the same for the teeth, we're just going to boost these teeth up using the, the, the bone white again. And don't forget as well, if we're doing the teeth, we're also going to be doing the claws um, and the nails just across the, the, the paws as well. I mean, take your time with the smaller bits just across the bottom of the jaw. Uh, the top ones are quite big and they protrude quite a lot, so that gives you quite a lot to actually work on with your bone white. But the smaller ones across the bottom do take a little bit of concentration just to catch right. And you don't have to paint the whole of the teeth. We're only painting sort of the bits that are standing out. We're just painting the bits that are sticking out the most. Just to get that, that, that highlight and that colour back on so that it, it looks like it all matches together. Just like so. Now with bones, um, I, I do sometimes use a different colour. So I do use a elfic flesh to highlight as well on times. Uh, but with this miniature, because it's mostly the skin that we're looking at, I didn't actually uh, go in for the highlight on this particular one. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to. If you want to highlight them, you can highlight them as much as you like. And I'm just going to use a dry brush back of that beastie brown, so the original colour that we used. And I'm just dry brushing that back onto the base, just to bring a little bit of the colour back out of uh, where the washer sat. So we uh, dry brushing the colour back onto the raised areas. And also, just to make it pop a little bit more, I'm also putting a little layer, a small, very light dry brush layer of khaki on there as well. Now, khaki will be a little bit of a different colour to the Beastie Brown, uh, but that's cool because that's kind of where we want uh, a little bit of the highlight across that base. And just take your time, less is more when it comes to dry brushing bases. You don't want to go too extreme, or overdo the dry brush and then it, it completely change the colour and the tone and the feel of the miniature. So just take your time and just use little bits and light bits of dry brushing. And the same with the rocks, I'm just going to dry brush those back with the original colour which was that Stonewall Grey. Um, just try to use a little bit of a smaller, more precise dry brush. Um, I'm using just the very tip of this brush to do the dry brushing, so I'm not using much uh, paint on the brush at all. And I'm just going to build those textures and layers back up as you can see here. It's just about being very, very careful, especially when you're underneath, because you don't want to damage any of the work that you've done on all of that skin as well. And one of the final stages that I always do is I always paint around the rim of my miniatures. Now, I normally paint them black, but you can paint them whatever colour you like. I know some people like to paint green. I know some people that like to paint brown around the base of the miniature because it blends in with the board a little bit more uh, naturally, rather than a big um, sort of like... Uh, too dark a shade which makes your miniature stand off the board too much but that's up to you now if you'd like to go and do a toxic base um, what I'm doing for the toxic base here is I'm just using a scorpion green now if you use Citadel the scorpion green is a uh, sort of a Leo's version of like a moot green so it's a very 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 vibrant bright bright green and I've watered this down quite a bit so that this will move and manipulate onto the the base quite a bit and pretty much that's all I'm doing is I'm just using the tip of the brush just to build um, sort of like um, 
a little bit of like pool in so I want this to just pool in areas around the feet around the rocks and things like that just to create a little bit more uh, to look at on the base and then I'm just randomly building that out almost as if it's like dripping or oozing across the base and the reason for this is this is quite a large base that is mostly sort of brown at the moment because it's dirt so I'm painting a lot of it in this green color just to kind of give it a little bit of a difference and kind of um, take away a little bit of that base to stop it being just all brown and things like that to give you something more to look at and also to keep it thematic with the, 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 fallout, uh, the fallout universe as well and as you see I'm just using the very tip of the brush as well just to drag a little bit of that color uh, down on the edges again creating that character as if there's so much toxic ooze and waste on this base that it's actually dripping over the base now this is purely an optional area but if you'd like to you can use um, an ink excuse me you can use an ink as well so if you'd like to you can use an ink to boost the vibrancy of that color and then you can just go across sort of the, the, the more uh, thicker sort of pooled areas where the, the scorpion green is. And then just build that tone back in. And like I say, because this is very thin, you're only putting this really into the big thick areas just so that it creates a little bit more vibrancy and more sort of like toxicity. So it kind of makes it look and feel a little bit like um, there's, there's more sort of color and texture and tone into the middle areas of where the toxic is. Now from there it's always nice to add maybe just a little bit of a grass tuft or a uh, plant tuft or anything like that. So I'm just adding a very small drop of super glue and then I'm just placing my green uh, sort of like tuft, my grass tuft here. And I've chosen to go with one that is quite thick and quite um, like a little bit of bracken and things like that. And that is also quite green as well, which is going to tie in with the base quite nicely. So you're sticking with earthy tones and things. And then when it's done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Like I said, spending all our time on the skin has been very much worth it. Because this is majority, uh, the, the majority of the miniature is skin, it looks fantastic at the end. And it's going to look fantastic on the board as well. So this is something that we're going to have a real good time playing the Fallout game with. So, as always, my friends, thank you very much for tuning in and watching. And you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you like my skin tones.